What's up guys, it's Mion, and I am back with another video today, another diecast review to do. This is another Wave 7 Authentics review, and this is one that I brought this up, or I think I brought this up in the Lionel Racing uh, open letter video, which if you haven't seen it, go check that one out. Um, this car got released in the Gold Series earlier this year, and it's taken all these months later to put it, and it ends up in Authentics. Um... It's one thing when a, a Gold Series car, or a car that's already released in the Gold Series gets put in Authentic as well. Sometimes it happens about the same time, like it gets announced, it's re or the uh, diecast gets released, and then the Authentics announcement comes out, and you know you see some of the same cars. Uh, but this one came out months later. Um, I, I think same thing with the Ryan Newman Castro car from Wave 6, um, and whatnot. And that kind of bugs me because... You know, you could have given this spot in the Authentics Wave to a DNP diecast, which would have been nice. Um, but it is what it is. So this is Tyler Reddick's number eight Caterpillar Chevy for Richard Childress Racing. And I gotta say, for Reddick, um, you know, if if it wasn't for the fact that, you know, the way the Rookie of the Year voting is, or the way the Rookie of the Year is determined, as I'll we'll go ahead and open this up. Um, you know, Tyler Reddick would have won Rookie of the Year. The only reason why he didn't was because Cole Custer got that win that got him into the playoffs and uh, Reddick did not get in. So by virtue of that, uh, Custer won. But I think everybody can agree that Reddick should have won Rookie of the Year, you know, because he statistically had the better season and whatnot. Um, Came close to winning a couple of times, actually. He had some great runs uh, at times. So, there's the diecast out of its box. Um, we'll go ahead and take a look at the Think You Know card, which I, I think is a neat addition, but, like, it's kind of like, eh. Like, it's whatever. It's like something you could, it could, it's that and the stickers, I think, are the things that we could do without. I'd rather see more of the hoods, maybe put the magnets on them again, like we used to. Um,. And uh, what's the other thing that normally comes in? Um, the Magnus, of course. Those are pretty cool as well. Uh, but anyway, so here's the diecast out of the box. And when it comes to Tyler Reddick, um, I thought it was pretty odd that Richard Childress Racing decided to boot Daniel Hemrick out of the eight car after one year um, of full-time Cup Series racing. I think Red Hemrick also won like Rookie of the Year. Granted, the Rookie of the Year class was kind of weak um, like compared to the year before, compared to last year. But it felt pretty odd that Hamrick would get booted out of the car and then, you know, they put Reddick in. Like, I get it. He's been really good in the Xfinity Series, really, you know, whatnot. Um, you know, he's won the championship down there. But, like, you know, it, it just it boggled my mind to see Hamrick get booted out like that. And, um, but now, you know, the way that Reddick performed last season, he had some great runs at times. He really did. And... Um, I think as far as my opinion on him goes, uh, I can't wait to see what else he can do because not only that, but you have the fact that Austin Dillon, Richard Jones racing as a whole last season, it felt like they really went through a resurgence is that's a nice looking front end, by the way, no real issues with it. A uh, little bit of sag on the windshield, not really loose, but just a little bit of sag there. But uh, as I was saying, um, uh, it was really cool to see how well Richard Childress Racing did last year. Obviously, Austin Dillon won that truck race, or not truck race, sorry, Texas race, excuse me. Um, you know, obviously, late restart, you know, hard to pass. I, I get it, but still, a win's a win. And then I think a lot of us had him going out first round of the playoffs, but he turned around and said, oh, yeah, watch this. Closes in on Kevin Harvick on the last few laps at Darlington in the playoff opener. Um, I think if he had a couple more laps, he would have caught Harvick and possibly passed him for the win. That that would have been neat to see. Um, and he, he did really well in the first round. Austin Dillon, he proved that he was not going to be a one and done, in, you know, first round out uh, this year in the playoffs. Obviously, the second round didn't go as well. Um, but, you know, in the end... This was a resurgence for Richard Childress Racing. This was a resurgent year for them compared to the, to, uh, sorry, compared to seasons past. Um, 
not just for Austin Dillon, who's had a few wins here and there, obviously won in Daytona 500 a couple years ago, but for the pro for the whole team. And um, I'm really interested to see where this where Richard Childress Racing goes from here. I'm really interested to see um, how will they do in 2021 and beyond. And I, I personally think the team is in good hands. Now, um, <laughs> so there's this thing that happened earlier this year, obviously with the whole thing with, with Black Lives Matter, with Bubba Wallace and NASCAR and all that. And, you know, Donald Trump, he made his comments. We all know how that all ha went. But um, it was one thing that, uh, that um, Trump commented, and I think he tweeted, it wasn't directly towards Bubba, but I, th I think the tweet, read something to the extent of Bob Wallace should apologize, da, 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 whatever, just just BS. And Reddick put out a tweet. It was a banger, by the way. It was a banger tweet from him. Um, <laughs> it would be like, you know, basically just, I forget exactly what Reddick said off the top of my head, um, but it was a banger tweet. It was like, you know, Bob Wallace doesn't have to apologize for anything. I think was basically the context of it. Um, and I had see I saw no problem with it. Um, apparently, though, I don't know what happened behind the scenes, but he ended up taking it down. I'm assuming somebody from Richard Charles Racing said something to him, which that sucks. But again, but like the tweet itself, there was nothing wrong with it. He wasn't he wasn't swearing his mouth off or whatever. He wasn't being a total ass. He he just stated a fact and was like, there you go and. We were all just celebrating it, you know, the tweet, because again, it was a really good tweet and it was perfect. And the fact that it got taken down sucks. I can understand it from me, from RCR, from a team perspective, you know, maybe they just, you know, maybe Childress or whomever, just, they didn't sort of want that PR, I guess, that maybe, you know, you know, we all know how Trump can be, you know. He, you know, he has attacked people, you know, verbally numerous times. Um, and maybe, maybe Childress just didn't want that on his team for that your tweet. But again, at the same time, it's like, come on, just leave it alone. But either way, just, just a little footnote. But again, as far as the diecast goes, not, no real issues whatsoever, to be quite honest. Although the only thing I am seeing is the gap there. And I'm seeing the way that the, the front wheels are, but it's rolling and it's not got any issues. So that's what matters to me. So uh, yeah, thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed. And if you did, uh, please drop a like, subscribe for more content like this. Let me know what you think, how well you think Richard Childress Racing is going to do the next year. Do you think 2020 was sort of a fluke for them? You know, maybe you could say the Austin Dillon win was a fluke, but then you look at how he performed in the first round of the playoffs and say, maybe not. Um, do you think Tyler Reddick's going to get a win next year? Um, just let me know what you think RCR is going to be like next year and how well do you think they're going to do? And, uh, with that being said, see you on the next video. Peace.